Oh great, all right, all right. So, you suck at shading, and I'm here to help. I'm going to start with some basics, such as 2D primitives. Oh, what does that mean? Well, the cool thing with light is when it comes from a source, it doesn't really shoot in beams. It, it's kind of like wavelengths and then like particles, combination of them sort of, and those are called photons. So if you thought about light, usually how people do is they imply that it moves in a general direction. Kind of like when I fart in a general direction, you'll, you'll generally smell the Forget that analogy, that's horrible. Anyway, um, yeah, so, you know, if, if light hits a surface, it doesn't, some some light parts get absorbed. So let's say you have, like, you have all the colors of the rainbow, so I'm going to choose, like, red. Uh, let's see. A little bit of blue, a little bit of yellow. Those get absorbed. In the, in the beautiful layers of whatever material is. And then whatever bounces off, say, you know, well, Mr. Friendly Red or whatever, that's what your eye will pick up. It's really a little crappy open eyeball, sort of. It's all surprised. It's like, whoa, well, what's happening here? And then it's it's like, Oh my god, I see everything. I see all of it. I see all the red. Yeah. So your eye gets all... So that's how light generally works, is that it bounces around like a bunch of little chaotic balls. So imagining how light, depending on a source, hits a surface and then bounces off determines how, you know, shading works. Um, so it's just the light is just angles, man. Just all, all the angles. So yeah, you could, you could do a bunch of cool stuff with light. You can even like light it down here. Why not? And the way that this transfers onto 3D or whatever, like say like this light is right here. You can tell that this is the most direct, and then this is the least direct right here. And let's say you took this into 3D. You're like, oh, the light's right here from this direction. Just imagine like a, a cube. See, like the 3D derives a lot from simple shapes, so the more you draw clean, simple shapes, the easier shading becomes. But if you if you just say like block it off right here, like right here, then you're like, oh, this point is the brightest. This is where the most light hits. You can determine, like, with a gradient or whatever. Oops. Oh, there's stuff around. It gets darker. Oh, huh. That's that's interesting. And, and you want to know what's also interesting? Um, if you're not facing it directly, there's something called a light side and a shadow side, which means that okay. So let's say this plane right here. It's taking uh, the light more or less head on, and then you got this dark, dank side right here, where it's not it's not getting you know the the direct orgasm of light. Again, instead, it deals with the sloppy seconds of light. So let's say a light beam skims off the edge, and it just happens to twiddle about, and then it bounces back off the edge. Well. You got something called a bounce light, and the reason why is because it bounced off on the surface and then it hit the thing. Now, here's the catch about bounce light. So, even though it gets lighter, it doesn't get too much lighter. And the reason why is because because you're getting like an indirect source of light versus the direct source of light right here, and it's just spraying its goodness all over the place. It's a uh, 
This is always going to be lighter. This light zone, even if there's like darkness, like right here, because not everything can be uniformly lit. You know, as, as much as I would love to be Snoop Dogg and make everybody uniformly lit, can't do it. It's not possible. So parts of it have to be darker. But then the thing to keep in mind right here is like, oh, this is still lighter than the lightest part right here. So dark mode, no matter what, even if you take this right here, and you take this, if you put them in a dark fight, this should win. This should not. This is the dark king. Even even if it's, this is the lightest color, and there, there's clearly darker colors, and there's clearly um, let's see, lighter, wow, that's so not visible, lighter colors that fade into um, racism. So that's so sad. I, that's, that's so sad. Generally, I like every value equally, kind of. I think darker colors are easier to read. Um, human eyes or whatever. We have this cool thing where we have these receivers of light. So let's say like you get all, the, all that good stuff, all those beams, all those rays. People are just clockwork oranging you with info. And let's say, so what, what your eyes tend to do is it has these rods and it has these triangle cone things. And your eyes have three types of cones. They have red, green, and uh, blue. And then those combos add together to make different kinds of light. But what we're primarily interested in, or what eyeballs tend to focus on, is, is the rods. They're much more sensitive. We have way more little straight line things that tell us the quality of dark versus light. It's, it's actually important for survival, and the reason why is because, like, if you have to tell, like, what's going on in the background where, you know, like, let's say you have, like, a person, he's like, oh, th this is the difference between someone who knows silhouettes, you know, and, and value distribution versus not, and they're like, hi, and, you know, say Mr. Cone, Cone Guy, it's like, oh, I don't know. Like silhouette is so important because it could be the difference from right here to, versus you know someone who's holding a sword, and this, this is a sword. Their arm is a sword. And if you can't determine light versus dark areas, then chances are your your body is not built for determining like these types of situations. But being that you're human and you have eyeballs and you're seeing this tutorial, uh, yeah, you got to think about it. <laughs> um, so yeah, like silhouettes are super duper important. They're meant for our survival. We, and then and then afterwards we're like, oh yeah, you know, like like that's that's like generally safe. So we we had some color. Like, what's the quality of this this stuff? And then you bedazzle it, and then people go crazy and give you millions of Twitter followers and all the fame and glory I could never get, you know, so that that's always fun. But um, yeah, so we register stuff darker a lot better because, uh, well, you know, chances are we don't have infinite brightness. I mean, the sun, the, the looking directly at the sun just blasts our eyes. Generally, we, we value things on things going from light to darker. So when we are people or just maybe, it could be just me, maybe maybe I'm special. But I like seeing the darkness right here a lot more. And generally eyeballs don't tend to care for lighter stuff. See like these little steps, like these little notches seem to be, oops, these little steps seem to be like, whoa, I can still kind of tell like what's going on versus this and this. You're like, oh, it's about the, it's about, it's about the same. Um, so it even, it's like a little lopsided, right? Like this, this feels like a lot more than this. So 
yeah, we have this, all these advanced computing processes that we just take for granted, and we're like, oh, this is the dark side right here, you know, like, haha, like, this is totally just shaded, and then, you know, you get all these cool mind tricks and illusions and stuff like that. But generally, like, the biggest tip that, you know, you want to give to yourself, and this is what a lot of painters end up doing, is they'll uh, be like, oh, I have a atmosphere, and then they draw. The first thing that they'll do is they'll draw the light side and the dark side. And that's called um, two-tone drawing. And the tone, much like music, is wavelength. So you get two to tones in terms of um, color. Two-tone can also mean, you know, like two types of anything. Like it, it just two of, two of anything. It's, it's like a deal, you know, like it's, it's great. Instead of one tone, you get two for the price of one. Um, wow, that's not, that's not feasible. I want to make it lighter. Yeah. Um, but generally black and white makes it the easiest to read because, you know, uh, rods, <laughs> rods, they're number one. This is usually number two. Um, and then from there, you know, people are like, oh, we'll split it up into maybe, maybe a third tone right here. And then that gets way more complex because you're, instead of, you know, like creating, you'll imagine if this were a white plane, it's going to make it into dots. All of a sudden, your brain's splitting up this plane into thirds. Oh, wow, things get a little rounder. And then people will end up, you know, just going crazy for the soft shading and the, and, and the reason why, uh, James, you go crazy for this. Ooh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And the reason why is because they're like, oh, I see millions of colors. Look how smooth and optimal I am. But that, that, that creates issues for a lot of beginners because then they don't see clearly, like, oh, well, you know, where does one plane begin and, you know, like one plane end? It could be from, like, right here to right here. Or like, you know, I don't I don't know. And that, that's part of why it feels good, but that's also part of why it could um, get really nasty and gross. So I see a lot of, you know, painters that just don't define the planes for themselves. And because they have no definition in the plane, you know, if, if they were flying in the air, they'd just, you know, crash into the floor, and that's sad. So now that you understand kind of like the idea that all right, you know, you got light that comes from like a point or it can come, you know, it can be blocked off and you know, like pointed or whatever and, and light bounces off because it's dynamic and that determines, you know, how much stuff you get. So let's say you, I, I really like the upper right hand angle. I don't know why, or left hand, I'm, I'm dyslexic. Yeah, you know, if, if I'm shining right here, I'm like, oh, this is the G-spot right here. But then this one right here, even though it turns away, I, I guess this is closer than that. So I guess I'll, I'll make that overall plane darker. So what I like doing is um, just dividing planes up. And then because this, this plane is turning away or whatever, by the way, this is a gross reduction, so there's probably better tutorials out there, but if you enjoy this one, I'm glad. That's, I'm glad I could teach you things. So yeah, you know, like you get your light one, and then, and then you start varying it up, and you're like, all right, well, you know, th this one's the darkest one, so just got to make sure that, you know, it doesn't ever get, like, to the same darkness. So I, what I do is I color select it, making sure that this is my value cap, and then I press, you know, one, two, three, four, and it changes my opacities up at the tippity top. Um, oh wow, oh, you can even hold the two buttons, so let's say I hold two and three, it changes the opacity to 23. Whoa, that's pretty sexy. I didn't know that. Um, so yeah, I'm going to make it opacity 5, 50. Opacity is um, transparency, so let's say I have a black. This is, this is, this is zero, or um, when I press zero, this is 100%. And then if I press 5, this is 50. And then, you know, 25. And let's see, 10. See, so it makes see-through things happen. See, right here, you get 
nice overlap. Fun. Okay, so, so I'm going to take this, this, this value. I'm just going to make this, oh, it's about the 75 mark right here. And this one's like that. Okay, cool. So that means that, you know, like I, I want to stay in between this zone right here if I'm to make this darker. Cool. You know, this is logic, right? You know, it's, and you don't got to go fancy with logic. You just piece things together. You kind of make sense out of it yourself. And if, if it feels bad, then, then try again, I guess. Um, we'll try to break it down with another video. Chica chica whack. All right. So that that's my basic primer in shading. Um, you can shade complex objects really well too. So let's say like I have like a, a human face with lots of planes. So this is gonna be kind of shitty, but I hope it makes sense. But Mr. He has all sorts of planes and crap and. They're just like, oh geez, like that's so much. Like, what do I do? Where do I even begin? It's just so complex. Well, I guess like what you can do is break it down. Like, you just be like, oh, this is like a cube right here. See, it took me two seconds to, and I'm just like, oh, you know, let's say the shading is like right here, like that way. I'm like, oh, it, it covers the radius, you know, like if this were like a, and that's also another thing, like light rays are kind of circular by nature. So like if you if you kind of guesstimate like things in terms of like 3D green space and stuff like that, that that's pretty cool. I'm also gonna make this um make this into a cone. Just, just to show that it's pointing that that way. Okay. Away, away and toward it's towards the cube, it's not it's not facing us, it's Yeah, it's not, it's not facing us. Yeah, it's just leaning. So that, that's one point light, and then uh, right here, right, this has less light and stuff. And, oh yeah, and then okay, so here's here's another another light trick. Something is called the contact point, and that's where if the light like presses in like against the surface area, you know, just two two things right here, and lights bouncing all around. Well, it's not going to touch this area very much because it's so protected from the light. So usually you get your, your really dark like little suggestion of stuff. And pe people can do gradients or change it up, but you do a little contact point of like what it's touching. And so if I have like a little floor, you touch it right there. It's a little buddy. But you know, if it's touching the wall, then then you just erase this little shit and then uh, it never existed. Haha, -ha, you know, goodbye floor. And they're like, oh, it's actually, you know, against the wall the whole time. And they're like, oh, that's what it makes contact with. Okay, that's what's why it's called the contact shadow. And then, you know, you get light bouncing off right here. And it just gets more complex over time. So, oh, by the way, here's a cool tip. So when light bounces right here and it's, it's like facing this way, and it's doing its bouncing action and it's just jangling all around. Um, there's one place in particular that just doesn't get any love. This little point right here, or the turning point between the sweet spot of, I'm not really hitting this light directly, and even when it bounces back, it's not really hitting me. This is called the core shadow. That's usually like the, the, the darkest part where it's showing the cusp of the dark side. So try to illustrate it, you know, the core shadow would be right here, right at this turning point. But then, you know, being that this is a sphere, you know, you, you gradiate it and stuff. So that way it's not as turd-like. Not shitty looking. But then that, that just feels so nice. And then you add a little bounce light and then, see, those are, the, so, Oh yeah, and then you can even add an extra highlight right here. So you got you got you know five things going on. You got your you got your light side, you got your dark side, and then you got you know your bounce light, all the bouncing goodness, and then you got you got your core shadow right here, and then finally you got your highlight, the the lightest point. Oh, it, it, it's so bright. 
doesn't there there it is it doesn't even exist it's like Eminem um, yeah so if you want to make a sick rap album cover now now you know some cool shading and uh, all right you know the, the skull so just gonna shade this part right here all of it and and because I did that it's it's like oh hey it looks like a 3D cube of sorts weird that's so crazy you know like I'm just covering the general shapes and then this goes inside right here because it's it's a socket it's like a little hole and you're like whoa that actually like feels dimensional and then you can you know, add details and do whatever you want but generally like you just do whatever you want afterwards and, and just really start figuring stuff out oh finally finally this is so important cast shadows crap I, I want to talk about cast shadows so let's say like lights hitting from here well the ring the core shadow determines the type of shape that light can no longer touch so let, let's say it's like you're like facing it this way or you got like this sad disc thing you know, it's still a disc even though it looks straight and light just can't you know access it anymore well it, it creates let's say like you know you're cock blocking someone or, or someone's playing basketball this is the the zone where he, you know he just light can't get through and, and that creates a little ring around it because it's the angles keep expanding you know light light is expansive it explodes outwards so generally like you'll get a little little spot where it just ain't touching and that's called the cast shadow because it's casting a spell when you cast a spell <laughs> towards a direction and, and it just sprays just all over just this one area it's it's gonna have an area of no contact and and depending on the direction the, the, the casting changes so you know if it's facing from this way it goes from here it really just follows you anywhere like a stalker it's just like a stalker wizard with this stupid wizard hat and he's just not leaving you alone he's just casting too many spells on you you know lightning spells it's really sad and you're just like oh and the dark side's like yes yes nothing happens to me i am beautiful um so there you have it yeah those are those are six shadows guys six Let's write that stuff down. It it's six for the price of one shading tutorial. So you get you know you got your light. Like it's it's illustrate that you got your light zone. Cha. And then I'm gonna I'm gonna make this slightly dark. Yeah, light zone, and then you get your dark zone. Dark zone, so dark, so beautiful, so chocolatey. Not really chocolate. Chocolate's a different color, but it is. It is still dark. Okay, cool. Um, so you got your darks, and then you got your uh, your bounce. Things be bumping and bouncing, you know, like bar parties and stuff. So that that be like. stuff that be bouncing so stuff like right here dim angles so let's make this black and then just just give it a, a touch you know like just a little rebellion nothing too crazy it hasn't become a riot yeah a little, little bounce light see already feeling like three-dimensional even like light it just like by a little tad, tad bit. You can even, you can add color if you wanted to. So something that's really cool is like, let's say, you know, like if this is green or whatever, it absorbs the color and then it becomes green. And whatever light source it is, so if it's, if it's like a red light source right here, it's just spitting it out. You get green and red because it's all colors and stuff. And it depends on the surface material and how light bounces off it because 
ah, materials do they're all different. So that, that's a different that's a different thing altogether. But anyways, continuing on with our review. Oops, that's red. That's that's no bueno. Number four, uh, you've got your core core shadow. Think, think of your abdominal core. I'm gonna have to shrink these. That that was. Yeah. It's all one big happy light family. Just like Dr. Light. He created Mega Man. And you're all going to become his Mega Man. Alright, so you got your core shadow. It's like, oh yeah, core. Core strength, core values, apple core. But yeah, you got, you got it right here. Mmm, yum. Got your highlights. Just gonna copy this because I'm a cheapo. But oops. Got your highlights, which you gotta add add some darkness to make it light. That's that's a sad truth. So here's your highlight. And your highlight's like, yeah, like I'm I'm popping. Look at me. I'm the king of light. King of the hill, and that's, that's assuming that still that this light is pointing in the right direction. Yeah, highlight, and then finally, um, the cast shadow. Oh shit, nope, I'm wrong, there's seven, there's seven, oh man, you got an extra bonus, but wait, there's more. Um, yeah, you got your contacts, so let's say it's like right here, you got your four. I'm just going to add the shadow and just cut through. Contact. And then, um, what was, what was? Cast, yeah, cast. It's like the cast system, things come in hierarchies. Uh, that's sad. I'll never make it in life. I'm just born into the situation. I'll never get out. And it's facing away from right here because it's that's that's where the direction. Is. Like it don't make no sense that if this is like facing up in his grill and it's just bouncing right in front that it'd be dark. Like it's just not happening. So I'm not, I'm making it go away, guys. See, I'm a little. I'm complex. I'm sophisticated, and it also it's the shape of an ellipse. I'm drawing through it. Don't judge. Don't judge. Okay, and yeah, that, that's that's about it. So keep all of these in mind. Um, what I'd recommend is choose your favorite one. So let's say you got like your core is your favorite, and you just you just love abs. You know, you, you're all about that that strong core and core fundamentals and stuff. Um, yeah, just just focus on on just making lines of where to think you divide where the lines would be in the shadow. So let's say I'm I'm shining it from right here. You're like, here's the line, bitch. Take them, take them all, and then you're like, these are my core lines, and then all the shading can fall underneath that. So that that's like one approach that you can you can take, and then um. And then just do that with like circles. You can do it with my square drawing skills on point today. You can do it like on uh, dance. Build up the complexity. Like if something is too complicated, like like build build the confidence. Generate a win for yourself. Like it's it's cool. Like this, for example. Like oh, you know th this is the core shadow right here. I'm, I'm, Making a light, so you're like, oh, this is where the core shadow should be, right, right here, and then, like, oh, this is a cast based off of the core or whatever, and you're like, ooh, it makes it, makes it like right here. See, I got my little cast buddy. He's helping me heal. I, I took a hard fall. He's just falling into place, right here, and, and then you're like, whoa, like, dude, this is this is sweet. I'm, I'm like making stuff feel like 3D. 
So there you have it. Shading. This was. Oh, okay. I was using the eraser. So this is, yeah, this is shading. And I'm your friendly friend, Alex. Um, you can call me, like, on hood for a mud No, I'll forget that. Just call me Alex. I'm Alex. Cool. So, um, follow me at Zulu on Twitter. If you want, if you want to see more tutorial updates, I'll be posting this on YouTube. I might even make a page. I, I have a Patreon. I should have a Patreon. So Patreon. Not oh that. I can spell that. Um, slash blue with an eight. Because I'm hip. It's not. It's not blue with a B. It's eight. It's been too real. All right. Peace. Enjoy.